Hi there, Scorpios. Welcome to your tarot reading. Um, I'm just going to preface this reading, you know, right off the bat. Um, this month, I feel that it's going to be a little bit challenging, okay? So um, for those who don't want to hear this, you might want to click off because I do feel that there are some warnings here that I'm seeing and uh, you, you might need to be a little bit careful, okay? Um, of course, there's always going to be highs and lows, you know, such as life. And so I feel like in the greater scheme of things, things will balance themselves out and kind of like, you know, plateau, okay? Reach like a state of like equilibrium and plateau. But I feel like things won't plateau and settle down and, and, and stabilize until possibly next year. Um, I'm seeing more like March and April. And so for this month, I feel like there are some major sweeping changes that are coming in and you might not see the end of it until you know the month of march and april april when things kind of mellow out okay so i will say this is not for the faint of heart um let me just go through the reading okay i don't want to scare you let me just go through the reading um first of all um i i saw one image and it looks almost like a, a traditional you know um uh, watercolor Chinese painting that's what it looks like um, they're they're like these really tall high mountain ranges they reach into the sky and uh, they're co covered with mist so you can see parts of the mountain range you can see parts of the hills and, and things like that and then there's a river and everything is just you know there's a lot of mist and dew and condensation in the atmosphere so it's hard to see so I would say um, visibility you can probably only see like a hundred feet in front of you and then i see this boat and i see this man on the boat he has like a really long oar and he's you know it's like one of those um one handed or or rather it, it just has one paddle so you're kind of sticking it to the bottom of the river and moving the boat along so that's what he's doing and um, he's dressed in blue. He, he's dressed in like some, some blue traditional loose clothing. And then there, there's a woman in red. She's uh, on the boat with him. So he's, they're, they're paddling. They're going towards a destination along the, the, the river. And then, but you know, they can't really see what's, what's ahead of them. But all the way out in the distance there's this little uh house okay and once again the atmosphere is is covered in in um in in like mist and just uh fog but you can see the house in the distance because there's a light that's turned on okay so it's it's highly elevated it seems like it's in the mountains but he's in the water uh on this boat and he's trying to get him himself and her to that destination and it seems like with this image what i'm seeing is like i know where i'm headed i don't know how to get there but i know where i'm supposed to be okay like th that's what this this image really screams out to me about and then i'm also hearing you know uh, it's like follow the path um, you're not supposed to map out everything. You're only supposed to, you know, do one thing at a time. Uh, think like a hundred feet ahead of you. Take it like, you know, one step at a time almost, or even a situation where you have to have blind faith in order to get through the murky waters. That's what it feels like to me. Um, it feels almost as if you are thinking about or embarking on a very daunting task. You don't have all the necessary, you know, information. You don't have everything within your toolkit, but you know exactly what the end product is supposed to look like. You know what the future is supposed to hold for you, but you don't know how to really get there. So I feel like the month of December is that, you know, embarking on this journey where, where you can only see that hundred feet ahead of you. And so it's really hard to plan from one day to the next when you, your, your vision is, you know, can only take you so far. 
if what's out there in the distance that you're trying to reach for or achieve or or you know attain is floating up there in the distance it's warm and inviting and it seems really comforting and it seems like the ultimate vision or the ultimate goal but the path that is tr th th that's like in front of you as to how can i get there it's very murky and i know this is something that's really uncomfortable for a scorpio to to believe in okay because you guys are very pragmatic and i i do feel like for the month of december it's really asking you to have blind faith to believe that there is something greater than yourself that is guiding you on this journey and that no matter what you're going to be able to you know it's like take one step and then the next step will show itself okay and it's also telling you as well you know don't cross that bridge until you get there so it's like you know don't count your chickens before they hatch so a lot of it has to do with foresight planning as much as you can plan within your means and i always would I feel like it, it goes without saying like saving up for a rainy day because you don't know what's in the distance. You don't know how far the, the journey really is. You don't know if that twinkling light in that little house um, is like, you know, half a mile away or even like a thousand mile, a thousand feet ahead of you. So I do feel in this situation, it's it seems very murky. It seems a little bit uncomfortable. And I almost feel like for many of you, it's almost like we're already, you know, knee deep in this. We need to do it. We need to get there. So we have no choice but to have blind faith in order to get through this journey. For some of you, I do feel like you might have recently um, um, broken up with a relationship partner and you're just trying to figure out, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out your bearing. Like, what's next? What's the next step? What do I do from, 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 from here on out? You know, what is my life going to look like? So you have all of these questions kind of just popping up. And I feel like you want all, all of those questions answered. You want to know, you want something certain. You want something to kind of like hang your hat on, you know? You want something to, to ground you, to anchor you, to even like, you know, stroke your hair and say it's okay everything's gonna be all right and i i feel almost like this is a spiritual journey it's really teaching you a lot about faith having blind faith have having trust that you know everything is gonna work out having trust that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that you're on your your true path so that's all i can can tell you and so, you know, to preface this reading, when I what I mentioned before, I feel like there are some major things coming into the picture. And it feels a lot like, you know, having the, 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 the rug kind of ripped out from under you. And you're going to have to find yourself again. Uh, you might be going through some type of an identity crisis. Okay, so for example, if um let's say you've been a teacher for like you know 50 years okay let's be realistic let's say 30 years and you're burnt out and you're just like i want a career like a changing career and you know being a teacher being an educator was always a part of your identity and now you're trying to figure out you know who am i okay or maybe you might have been like a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad a stay-at-home parent and that was your identity, you know, the caretaker, the nurturer. And then all of a sudden you might get divorced or, or separated. And then you're going to, um, you're finding yourself having to go back into the labor market. And you're like, what am I good at? What, what are my skills? What do I want to do with my life now? Now that the other chapter of my life, which is, you know, caretaker, homemaker, teacher, whatever it is, uh, that identity is no longer there. What do I want to do now? So I feel like there is um, something here to be said, you know, Scorpios, you guys are a fixed sign and um, whatever you do, you do it really, really well. 
okay and um, I feel that way strongly with a lot of Scorpios with a lot of Virgos whatever you put your heart and mind to whatever you identify as your craft whatever it is that you do you don't half ass things you do it to the best of your capabilities you pour your heart sweat and and and, and tears and soul into a a thing a project a person you build it up from the ground and it is the best that you that anyone can do and because of it it seems like you know you you leave pieces of yourself in whatever endeavor you undertake and it's a part of your identity you know everything that you have done you have built up is a part of your identity because you're that perfectionistic about the things that you produce and so when these things are kind of like you know the, the layers of banana like the banana peels when they're peeled away one by one and we're left with this foreign, you know, white object that is the banana without the, the peel. It's like, what am I now? You know, what, who am I? I? I do feel this sense of like an identity crisis for some of you. And then I also feel like the sense of excitement, renewal, trepidation for others of you who are willingly embarking on a new path to either change your career, to reinvent yourself, to find the next destination in your life's journey. And so what I sense is this reading could be even like split in half, okay? So there are a few more messages I'm going to relay at the end for you, but uh, let me just go through the cards first because um, I feel like many of you are just like looking for answers, okay? Like, where do I step? It's almost like, you know, that, that game Minesweeper? Um, it's like an old PC game for those of you who might not be familiar with it. You click on little boxes and uh, the boxes are like, you, you don't know what you're clicking on. But if you happen to click on a mine, then the whole thing explodes and then you lose. It's a really weird game and I, I don't feel like there's any rhyme or reason. Maybe there is. Maybe you haven't read the instructions. But it seems like a, a minesweeper game. It's like, I don't want to step here. I don't want to step over there. Um, it, it's almost like you're, you're very hesitant about making a move. Um, I feel like there is something here about like a very delicate situation where one thing can kind of trigger it or one thing can throw something off kilter or off balance, okay? So let me go through the cards. So first of all, I have here the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands. Um, this is pretty much, you know, being very laden and burdened with something, okay? The, the the stuff that we accumulate through life, okay? This is a pack rat. This is somebody that hoards. This is somebody that has a tendency to just collect bits and pieces of scraps that they have no use for. And they look at it and they're like, oh, one day I might need that. Or one day I can put that to use. And yet their day never comes. So things just pile up. Things just pile on. Um, I feel like for some of you, this might be you who might be trying to fill like an emotional void with stuff okay so uh, you might have like a shopping addiction you might have um, a penchant to 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 for emotional spending you know spending money to get your mind off something you might hoard a lot of things to fill like an emotional void or you might be dealing with somebody. A lot of Scorpios um, are very clean, are very minimalist. Or at least, you know, when you, you buy something, it usually has a function, okay? It's not just decorative. It usually serves a purpose. And so I feel like you might be dealing with somebody who's messy, who's, um, I want to say, like, they hoard everything. They might be a little bit greedy. They might be, like, um, in your eyes, a little bit selfish. I just want you to understand the mentality that, that you know, that, or, or like the, the um, psychosis that, that contributes to this type of behavior. They're usually living in a place of scarcity where they have never had enough, so they've had to resort to hoarding. 
because they're fearful they're fearful of like you know losing everything and having the the the, the rug ripped out from under them and ending up with nothing so they might you know swirl away their assets they might be very paranoid about having their things taken away they might even be um they, they might be even like defensive or indignant when you try to correct their behavior or you try to help them. So I do feel like you're dealing with someone who's quite difficult and uh, I, I do sense like they're messy. They're, uh, it's hard to get them organized. It's hard to get them motivated. They're very set in their ways. And they're also like uh, not the neatest people to be around, okay? So I feel that you're dealing with somebody who, who exhibit these behaviors and I keep hearing like putting up with it, putting up with it. So you might have, you know, gone a really long time putting up with their behavior, putting up with their, um, you know, quirks, putting up with the way that they behave, putting up with them being super defensive. And, you know, when someone tries to give them advice, they kind of lash out, okay? And it, it, it's sort of like, somebody who doesn't really have the skills but rather than asking for help they're just indignant you know they're they're like defensive indignant closed off doesn't want to um possibly even very proud and they don't want to appear vulnerable so i feel here this is a situation where somebody needs help and um, I feel that you're getting frustrated with this person. For some of you, this could be like a, a very stubborn child, okay? For others of you, this could be a very stubborn parent. Um, siblings, I'm hearing for some of you. It's somebody who has a lot of faults. Let's just be honest here. They have a lot of faults, but they're refusing to admit their faults. They're refusing help. They're refusing your advice they're 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 just like reckless even i have the fool on top of the ten of wands which indicates to me it's somebody who's like caution to the wind okay throw caution to the wind i don't care i'm just gonna do things my way um it's like jump in first ask questions later so you're dealing with somebody like this and i feel like it it, it is a major source of frustration for you okay so this is coming out bright and early in the uh, beginning of december this is not going to permeate you know the rest of december but i do feel this might be a very important character in your life because once you guys form emotional connection with a person a friend a family member a lover um you know your own parents even once you form those emotional connections you hold that person in your inner sanctum and this person becomes like a very important fixture in your life and so there's a lot of frustration in dealing with somebody like this who it's it's, it's almost like they they don't see a way out they don't see they're too proud to admit their mistakes they're too proud to ask for help okay um i feel like in a spiritual way their soul their heart is really screaming out for help okay i do feel there's some emotional issues here associated with this person they need help they're they're really screaming out for help and they want you to be patient with them if in their physical form they're not able to tell you this in their spiritual form they want to tell you you know help me you're 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 strong enough you're organized enough and you're loving and caring enough and and you know i don't know how to ask for help in my human form but i'm asking you for help in my spiritual form in in spirit form and it's showing up here in the six of cups okay this is a very strong spiritual connection emotional connection that you have with this person they're screaming out for help and so i would say slow down and heat the, the the signs heat the warning signs this person needs something from you and you know they were fighting it okay seven of wands being super defensive they were fighting it they were thwarting your advance advances or thwarting your advice or you know shrugging it off or blowing you off um but like i just feel there's a situation here where 
don't be too quick to to get frustrated with this person i know that you know a lot of the times when we have an emotional history with somebody they know how to push our buttons right and they know how to strike us where it hurts but i feel like there's somebody screaming out for help here not physically but emotionally they're they, they need some help and and they I, I feel like for some of you, you might have resentment towards this person, and rightfully so. But I do sense that if, you know, if everyone in their life has tried to help them and hasn't made any traction, hasn't had any successes, you are probably in the best position because as emotionally wrapped up as you are in this person, you're also very, very sensible when you give out advice. And so you might be in the best position to help this person, okay? So enough about that. I'm going to try to clear up this energy so that we can move on. Because I feel like, you know, this shouldn't be taking um, the majority of your time for the month of December. We have bigger things here that are at stake, okay? So I do sense um, there's a, a situation coming back from the past, okay? And um, I don't know if you have been dealing with this during the Mercury retrograde, which is, you know, all through November around your birthday time. Um, but I do feel like it's, it's coming back around. And December is, you know, the holiday season. So a lot of people from our past uh, tend to come back in, shoot us, you know, random text messages here and there, drunk texting, um, I would say like butt dialing, you know, pretending to butt dial, but like really they're trying to get a hold of you. Um, I do see a situation here where somebody is like testing their water, the, the water with you, okay? Somebody is like testing where they stand with you. They're trying to like gauge how you're reacting to them. This can be through uh, text messages through social media through some type of a distance based communication so they're not doing this face to face you're not seeing them in the flesh you're not seeing them physically um it's just things that are done you know over distance and what i have here is i have the eight of wands fast swift communication by the way you have an extra card that that fell out and then i have the three of swords the Three of Swords usually indicates a separation, okay? So somebody that you've been separated from is um, approaching you and wanting contact, wanting communication. I do see communication coming back and forth, but it's linked up here with the Page of Pentacles, so it's very slow. And it's very, you guys have a really good sixth sense. It's like if somebody's coming in and they're not, um, they're, they're like fishing for, for, for information or fishing for um, testing the water with you. Like, like you know exactly, you know exactly what their intentions are because you guys are really sharp. And as soon as you know what their intentions are, you're waiting for them to be blunt and be straightforward with you. You don't want to be beat around the bush and and you feel like they have this circuitous way in which they communicate and it drives you nuts it, it, it gets under your skin and so you're i feel like scorpio is thinking you know why don't you just spit it out and then when they keep going around and around and trying to beat the uh, around the bush and and not being you know upfront and honest with you about what it is that they want you know it's, it's not just a simple hello it's they want something and i feel for many of you this is an x okay because with the three of swords this is a separation and this could have been a painful separation from your end or from their end usually i feel like it, it might be from their end because i feel like you don't you're losing your patience so you're not emotionally wrapped up in this it's gone and, and done with but i feel like from their end there's still cords of attachment to you and i feel like they're trying to figure out whether or not you're you're still available whether or not you're still interested and so they're beating around the bush it's getting you more angry and so you cut off the communication 
because you want them to be sincere and straightforward and just, you know, spit it out. Like, what do you want? So I, I, I see this type of communication coming through and this might be dotting, you know, th this energy might be sporadic on and off, but it's going to permeate through all of your December. And so if this is somebody that you don't feel like you have that emotional connection anymore, just leave it alone because they're going to say and do things to frustrate you, to kind of like um, reel you back in, okay? And then for others, um, if this is somebody that you want to engage in conversation with, just tell them, hey, um, I'm really busy, so can you tell me what you want? just like cut the BS, you know, like cut the bull, like j let's just be honest, let's just be adults here. So I feel like just being really clear and being very blunt about your intentions for other people might actually do the trick for this month, okay? Um, what I feel about water signs in general, and this is something that a lot of Cancerian people, well, Cancerian and Pisces, you guys are a little bit better at it, I feel. Um, you guys are, are really, really nice people. You don't want to say anything to upset anybody. You also don't want to make anybody feel bad. And like, I love water signs because they're very kind. But I do sense a lot of the times, um, it might be a lot better for you if you're very blunt and very honest with people, okay? Um, especially this type of people, these, these types that are coming through, because I feel like they're evasive, okay? They're evasive. And, and, and if somebody's being evasive, like not being straightforward with what they want, um, wanting one thing but saying another, like if someone is just, you know, wishy-washy or like don't even know what they want, um, mirroring that energy is not going to be helpful, right? So either you do like, you know, one fell swoop, just cut it off, or just be very, very blunt with the communication, okay? Because what I, I do sense is like um, that, that whole foggy scene that I saw at the very beginning is permeating through this entire reading where information is not clear, communication is not clear, people's intentions aren't very clear. Um, and so rather than having to deal with this murkiness, you know, one step at a time, I, I feel like it might be better to just splice through the BS and just ask people, you know, what it is, what, what do you want? Like, what do you want? What do you want from me? Why are you communicating with me after all these months? What exactly is going on with you? Why do you need me? You know, why are you choosing me other than all the other people you have in the periphery of your life? I feel that holding people accountable, you know, j just like for being clear, for being concise, for being um, blunt with their communication, because I frankly, I, I feel like you're gonna be very busy. You don't have time for all of this. Okay, so stating your intentions a lot of the times to the way that we interact with another person, it's always a two-way street, right? Um, we have to make our intentions very clear. You know, if you want to call me or if you want to have a conversation, don't do it through text. Call me directly. And then likewise, you know, the other person can set their expectations for you. It's a two-way street and I feel like this is uh, not an exception. This is a situation where you really need to be very clear about what you want from the other person because no one has probably told them, you know, that. No one probably, t like no one has probably told this person their behavior is problematic or this person that their communication is not clear. So I feel like it, it's, it's just going to be very helpful if we hash these things, you know, out before we engage in further conversation, because like, what's the point, right? So that's just what I'm feeling. And uh, I just feel like you might be a little bit frustrated this month because of all the things that you have on your plate, all the things that you're trying to wrap up so that you can, I feel for many of you, there might be a trip too. So like you're, you're wrapping things up so that you can, you know, be out 
out of work or out of a situation in time to catch a train, catch a flight, catch a ferry, uh, pick up the rental car, something like that, where time is very, very limited. So don't let these things, you know, um, don't let these things interfere with your plans because they're they're frustrating and we don't need to engage in that okay so enough about that i don't mean to be preachy but um let me just talk a little bit more about a few things so i feel like there's communication coming through and i feel like this is going to be heavy in december and i feel like it's somebody that they show up here page of pentacles this is sort of like you know hey you want to meet up for coffee and talk um like a, an offer of, of something like an offer for a face-to-face -face type of a sit-down conversation it's done over like swift through electronic means so i don't see that you're going to see them i see that they're you know um trying to engage you in conversation because ultimately they want this they want to give you a gift for some of you you might be meeting somebody and they're like hey i've got you something okay which is great and then for others, I feel like this is, you know, exes, people from your past. Um, I also feel for many of you, this might be a situation where there could be, um, on a lighter note, there could be like year-end bonuses, there could be bonuses, there could be gifts, there could be like um, performance-based type of a bonus, okay, which is great. And then I also feel like, um, like, like, royalties um tribute or something being given to you because of some work well done or because you you it's like it's owed to you so like money that might have left your hands for whatever reason is being set back okay it is like being given back if you have loaned somebody money or favors these favors or that financial, you know, um, handout is going to be paid back to you with interest. And then I also feel like for many of you, this is like a huge bonus in a work situation. So we have a lot of things here. Um, I also feel, and I must say this, um, even though it's negative, but I feel like, I guess like there's a, a silver lining. For example, if, if you've had any issues with your home, like um, uh, let's say a, a tropical storm hit your house and you know the, the roof caves in, I feel like there's some type of a collection, like a insurance payout that will be given to you, okay? If it have, has been stalled in the past, there's something coming in to compensate you. If you, God forbid, like got in a car accident in a fender bender, and your car was totaled or your car was um you know you you've been dealing back and forth with this very slow process knight of pentacles the the slowest moving uh messenger in the deck okay if finances or or news about money or news about a settlement or news about you know some type of compensation has been so slow and frustratingly you know slow in coming um you're going to be able to get some type of a uh, an answer so like it, it's going to be you're given an answer and there's a lump change lump like a lump amount or lump sum that is coming into the picture so i i do feel you know in a way it's like being able to get what is rightfully yours and and being able to even though there has been a lot of waiting and and, and hang-ups and frustration um, for those of you who might be freelancers or contractors or even self-employed, if you work for a client and this client might have been very difficult, there might have been a lot of back and forth regarding um, their expectations and what they wanted you to do for them and when and, and how they're going to pay you, all of these things are getting sorted out just so that you can, you know, uh, get the money that's due to you okay this is a situation I feel it's been frustrating there have been a lot of back and forth a lot of hang-ups and I feel like the air is, is is getting cleared up and you can breathe again okay so finances honestly will be um, really picking up it's like if you've had financial issues it's alleviating if you're on a financial like 
at a plateau more and especially if you're like self-employed more clients will be coming in and i do feel you know march and april are major breakthrough months for you guys when it comes to your finances i also feel as if um there's a situation here where you are definitely trying to start something brand new you're trying to I'm feeling like cast away the expectations, other people's expectations, your own expectations of yourself. Um, I, I see this man with a cloak, okay? And the cloak, it's like a, a cape, a cloak is really heavy and it on it is like newspaper, like newsprints, that's what it looks like. And he, he's just like, I'm sick of it. And, and he tries to cast it off and what I feel is like, for some of you, you might be in the tabloids, you might be in publishing, you might be dealing with a situation where there's a lot of gossip, or there's a lot of just um, bickering banter back and forth. And I feel like in a work environment, it might have been just um, a series of frustration. You're trying to cast it off and you're trying to go on a new path. When it comes to your career okay so so we have some really strong major major um like we have the tower as well the fool and the tower the two major arcana cards um that denote pretty much the same thing okay so this is pretty much like breaking down something starting on a new path okay dismantling something so that you're free to go and what it seems as if you have been mulling this over for a long time you're taking all the baggage with you okay you're you're kind of like i don't need to be here i need to be somewhere else so i'm, I'm bringing all of my stuff moving like physically from one house to the next i feel like you're defending your position so you might have a lot of people in your life who might be telling you don't do that that's not the right way to go you've you know for example have been a teacher for 30 years you have good pension you have good retirement but you're burnt out you don't want to do it anymore you know once upon a time that was the ideal job for you but now the job no longer serves its purpose your your destiny is elsewhere so you want to leave and you want to jump into something new but people around you are telling you are, are kind of like misguiding you making you doubt yourself making you question like questioning your authority but also questioning your change of heart but deep down scorpios you you've always mulled over this decision you know you you, you guys don't make decisions lightly and so i feel like you're not in a position where you don't you have to defend your your position or your beliefs or your decision to anybody you don't need to do that you don't need to justify yourself for anybody and you're starting to realize that now but i i feel like there was a situation you stayed in for a very very long time because of obligation because of expectation because you were doubting whether or not this is all it, it, it's like this is all I'm really good at you know or this is something I'm really good at and you were afraid to take a new path because you were really good at this one thing and like I said when you do something you do it really well and so whatever next venture per uh, career path profession you know like like change in profession that you decide to undertake you're going to do it well, but I feel almost like you're losing faith in yourself or you're having doubt about your capabilities. So it's really prevented you from taking this next path. Okay. And you have taken a lot of time mulling it over. Okay. This is like really, really slow progress. And you're, you might feel like you're not progressing anymore. You might feel like you've already learned everything there is to learn. There's nothing new. There's nothing interesting about it anymore. anymore. So you really want a change in scenery. You really want a change in direction. But you know, this is a turtle, a tortoise. 
And even at this point, if he wants to pull on the reins and change direction, that tortoise is going to take some time to, to realign himself and to adjust his body and to move himself in a different direction, right? So change takes time, but I also feel like you've been sitting here defending this and, and doubting yourself for quite some time and not really sure if this is the right path for you to take. And I feel like everybody around you is very risk averse. They're, they're, they're telling you, you know, stay with the status quo. Don't make any drastic moves. Don't, um, <clears throat> don't go on this journey, you know, don't cast it off. Don't travel light. And they want you kind of like strapped and tethered to things that you don't need, to things that are not really helpful for you or, you know, have become a huge burden to you. And they don't really understand that you're kind of um, buckling under this pressure. So I do sense this is a decision that you need to make on your own without the noise and the influence of other people, because ultimately you know, they, they might want the best for you, but I feel like their advice might not be appropriate for your life, for for all the things that you already know about yourself, their advice might not be appropriate. Um, I feel like there's a group of people here, you're already 10 steps ahead of them. So whatever advice they're giving you is pretty belated and not applicable to your life right now because you're 10 paces ahead of them. Does that make sense? You have already outgrown a situation. There isn't any more growth that you can extract, you know, wringing a towel, like you, you can't extract anything else, else out of it. And so it's time to go. Uh, for, for other of you, there might be a property, like a physical dwelling, a house, an apartment, or whatever it is that's physically holding you back. You might want to, you know, move somewhere else for a new job, but you have a property that you need to sell. Okay, so I feel like there is um, a lot of like logistics that need to be kind of squared away and you're trying to make sense of it in your mind. What do I do first? What's step one? Sell the property. Step two, you know, get a job or do I get a job first and then try to sell the property? So I feel like there everything is like linked up, you know, lace like what is that word? I, I, I'm sorry, my vocabulary is escaping me. So everything is like interrelated or like embedded or just, you know, enmeshed. So one decision can't be made in a vacuum. Okay, like one decision depends on another. And because of it, things get really complicated. And I, I get that. But I do sense that, you know, they're telling you one step at a time figure out what you want to do. If the move is what you're trying to do, then go for that move. You know, maybe find that job first. Once that job is locked down, then you can think about selling the property. So I feel like there's a lot of things here and in your mind, everything is so interrelated and, and like embedded and layers upon layers and you can't really pull yourself from it and make a decision. But the way you're looking at it might be a little bit muddled or might be wrong. So I would say try to simplify, okay? Figure out what you're trying to do first and take the first step to get yourself closer to that situation. Never mind the house, never mind the relationship, never mind the, the, the family unit, never mind who needs help over here, who needs advice over here, who needs you to stay here, never mind all of those things. Figure out what your goal is and take the very first step to get you there. And then the rest will pretty much fall into place because honestly, they don't really matter. So the way that you're operating right now, I feel like you have a lot on your mind you have a lot that you're mulling over. No actions are being taken because things, I, I feel like you might be making things a lot more complicated than they need to be. And it doesn't have to be so, okay? So I don't wanna sound patronizing because I know that in your mind, these problems are real and these things are difficult and, and um, murky. But I can assure you that 
everything can be broken down into smaller, more manageable pieces. And when they're smaller and more manageable, they're easily digestible. So I hope, you know, in whatever way this reading is helpful, I hope at least you can take away the message that, you know, break down all these complex things into smaller parts and tackle them one at a time. What I have here is the High Priestess following your intuition and you know what exactly does that mean right um it basically means that you have to have blind faith i feel like for many of you you already know what you want to do you you already like you're 10 paces ahead of the game ahead of all the other players and because you're thinking and advancing so far ahead inevitably you always get into a situation where you're doubting right it's like, what if this scenario pans out? Or what if, you know, this doesn't work out? What's the, the, the alternate route? And I feel like rather than focusing on all the things that could go wrong, we really need to have faith. We really need to trust ourselves that our intuition is guiding us on the right path. Our intuition is kind of like helping us navigate this murky foggy waterway so that we don't hit the mountain sides we don't run into you know logs in the river that we will be able to get to our destination where that light is because i feel like you might have been doubting your intuition you might have been doubting a specific path that you're supposed to take you might have hesitated on taking a once in a lifetime opportunity as it presents itself because it's like out of fear, not trusting your intuition. And I also feel for many of you, the last time you might have jumped into something, like wholeheartedly jumped in because you felt in your hearts of hearts, it was the right thing. And for some reason, it might have backfired. Things might have fallen apart. Things might have left you with this huge burden to bear all by yourself. And I feel like you always think back to this moment in time and you're like, I was so sure. I trusted my intuition. How could my intuition, you know, lead me astray? And now because of that, it, it's coloring your judgment when it comes to this new situation. Uh, where it's asking you to have, you know, a similar, in a similar way to have like blind faith. And so you're kind of jumping back emotionally. You're still here reeling from whatever situation this was that really failed you're reeling from the impact of that and it's coloring your experience in this new situation and this new situation is very solid okay pentacles can be built upon so with this page of pentacle it's an idea it's a gift and it's asking you you know sort of like we can build it together you're not alone in this i'm giving this to you Whatever you choose to do with it, you know, is up to you. So I feel like you have the upper hand here, mainly because you've been through this situation. You know what to avoid. And so it's something is coming through in December to really drastically change your life direction for the better. Moving away from all this chaos, this nonsense. And moving towards something that has a lot more, I want to say, stability. It's something that you can hang your hat on. It's something that can really anchor you. It's that much needed sense of stability you've been looking for for quite some time. Um, I feel for some of you who might be parents. Or even if you're dealing with children, okay? You have some really stubborn kids or some like a, a, I feel like a very obstinate kid who just wants to it, it's not that they're stubborn or you know um, rebellious I feel like they just want to experience things okay so that means if you force them to not do something they're gonna do it either way behind your back okay and so the the proper way to address this situation is talk to them and tell them well you know tell them all the possible outcomes so for example if um, 
let's say, let's just say, okay, um, if they're like, I, I don't know what's, what do kids get into nowadays, but whatever the situation is, let's just say if they decide to cut school or if they d decide to stop going to school, high school, okay, you can tell them, well, here are your options. You can drop out of school now for the rest of your life. You might be working like, uh, you know, a um, minimum wage job, hoping to advance. That's what your future is going to look like. Or you can, you know, finish school now, continue to go to college, and then your income uh, earning capabilities will be greatly accelerated. Or if you want to quit school now and you want to be self-employed, like lay out those options for them. Because I feel like you're dealing with a child that just wants to experience life for himself or herself. And this child will do it no matter what. Like they, they can do it in front of you or just behind your back. So it's going to happen. And so you might want to just lay out these options and hope that it's a very smart child and hope that they're smart enough to figure out the best route for themselves. But preventing them might actually backfire because I feel like they're, they're, there's some sneaky behavior here, okay? I, I'm hearing like while you were sleeping, like you might be looking away, dozing off, and they're just gonna do what they wanna do, okay? So I, I feel like that's a better option here. The last card that I haven't really talked about, but this is like the dozing off, okay? Four of Swords. While you were sleeping, while you were resting, um, I feel once again, you know, this entire spread and this entire reading is really about um, quickening, quickening up your pace, being decisive. And I also feel like making this major change it seems like life is slipping by, right? While you were sleeping, life goes on. And I feel like you're waking up for the first time and, and, and realizing where did the time go? Where did my twenties go? Where did my thirties go? And this energy tends to come up a lot with a lot of signs as we reach December and heading into the new year because you know we're making new year's resolution we're trying to change our life we're, we're starting to see the acceleration of time right where did the time go i i feel like there's a situation here where you're waking up to your life to the reality of your life and you're just like what have i done with the time what have i done in my 20s i should have gotten this done in my 20s why am i still waiting until my 30s or into my 40s or into my 50s to get this done and the advice here is, you know, don't chastise yourself over that. There's a time and a season for everything. And you had to experience other things before you can be emotionally, mentally, and physically, and spiritually ready for this thing. So other people got it out of their way in their 20s or in their 30s. But you were learning different lessons. You were going through different things. And right now where you are you're meant to experience this thing that most people experience you know early uh, earlier it doesn't mean that you've missed out on, you've missed the boat it doesn't mean that you've missed out on opportunity it doesn't mean that you're a late bloomer it just means this is your life path okay so i feel like there's a lot of um i, I feel this overwhelming sense of like I missed out. I, you know, the time has gone by. Time has just, you know, like sand slipping through your grasp. And it's like, it's better late than never. So I feel like you shouldn't let anything kind of get in the way of you starting your life right now. Okay. Better late than never. Do this now rather than, you know, thinking about what could have been if you had done it. Um, I'm going to leave it at that, Scorpios. Um, it is a little bit of a heavy reading. You have some, you know, good news coming through when it comes to your finances. You have some major decisions that you're mulling over that you need to really, um, I'm, I'm hearing like step on the gas, step on the gas, okay, that you need to, to, to move things along. And I feel like you've been hesitant about making this major change rightfully so it's a major life change so this tower 
smack dab in the middle is indicating to me things are coming waves of change okay look at that giant tidal wave and you're going in slow motion knight of pentacles you need to be quick and swift and you need to quicken your pace and step on the gas okay I will leave it at that Scorpios. I hope the reading finds you well. I hope that you have stayed for the entirety of this reading. I hope that it is helpful for you as we get through, you know, December. And I apologize for the delay with the video, okay? I wish you all the best and have a wonderful holiday season. I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.